Welcome ladies and gentlemen back to the 3L channel. If you're new here, just jumping on for the very first time, my name is Chad. Welcome aboard. Kick your feet back, relax, and do some great music. Well folks, as you know, as most of you know, we're starting off this weekend with a bang. Marathon weekend with the Brothers Gibb. You guys know the drill, and you also saw the title. This is one of Barry Gibb's demo session outtakes. We're going to dive into the background and the music all coming up. Don't go anywhere. The three brothers began negotiating privately with Warner Brothers in March of 1986 for a new series of Bee Gees albums. At that time, Barry was recording his second solo album for MCA and Polydor, and Morris and Robin were recording an album for Swedish singer Corolla. Both projects would be complete in May. Without announcing the label, the brothers let it be known that they would begin writing songs together in June and would record a Bee Gees album between July and September with George Martin as the producer. But this did not happen. The three were in England together at that time. They wrote and recorded a few songs for the Bunburys project and Raman did a vocal on a charity record. The Bee Gees signed on with Warner Brothers in October. The same month, they spent a few weeks in New York working with Arif Martin on new recordings. This would be the beginning of the ESP album. For record releases, 1986 was a bad year. Barry's album was rejected by MCA. Corolla's album and singles were released only in Sweden and Norway. And the Bunbury single was released only in Britain. This left fans in major markets including North America with no new Gibb records at all. Perhaps a few noticed Morris's score in the film A Breed Apart, which was finally released after two years on the shelf. Okay, folks, let's dive into this oldie but goodie and obscure track from Barry Gibb himself. Let's go. Definitely a different sound. Somebody whispered that you want me. I can not feel in my ears. And I can put you in corner of my heart. Are you whispering through your tears? You see the day. Bye. 
So I definitely want to lay out the pros and cons of this track, uh, hearing it for the first time. Definitely sounded different in the very beginning. I didn't know what I was in for, but when it came in with those nice, smooth acoustics, you know, that guitar sound, just a really smooth um, intro to the song, uh, that really uh, attracted my attention right off the top. Uh, Barry's vocals, you know, he's one of a kind uh, songwriter and singer, just beautiful vocals. You know, it, it, it can be argued down through the years whether or not he overused the falsetto uh, tone. But you know what? I think for a space and time, they were going for a certain sound, especially in 79 for the Spirits Having Flown. Uh, that was basically the whole feel of the album. And 75, I think, for Main Course, I believe, was it? Uh, Nights on Broadway, where he actually started using it publicly. Um, this song, yeah, you know, with, with the falsetto vocals, it, it, it was, it was a smoother flow to me, even though he sang it in that style all throughout from beginning to end. It didn't seem to be so harsh in my ears than some of the other tracks that I've heard. Don't get me wrong, I love, uh, the falsetto tone. Uh, I especially loved it in, uh, Too Much Heaven, as you all know. That's what got me started on this BG journey in the first place, was those beautiful falsetto vocal by Barry in that song, Too Much Heaven. And uh, it was just gorgeous. You know, I, I, I think there's times where it sounds better than others, and it, it all depends on a lot of factors. You know, like the, the tempo of the song, uh, the harmonizing, uh, the way the song is composed you know, the composition of the song. All these things have a factor and part to play in whether or not the falsetto sounds good. In this particular case, it was more laid back for me. Even though it was a falsetto, it was it seemed to be more relaxing to me. Kind of difficult to explain. Now, this is obviously from the Hawks sessions, but it never made its way uh, onto an actual album or, or you know, publicly recorded. But, you know, as I said before, it's kind of fun to dive into some of their projects um, that they were working on. Uh, for whatever reason, they weren't used in an, any finished album. And there were probably a lot of projects like this as well. This is what they did for a living. So, you know, obviously they're constantly in the studio, you know, practicing, recording, making music, uh, whether it gets approved and released or not you know it just like a per, an artist who who can paint or draw pictures with or illustrations with pencil they might have a lot of unfinished projects laying around the house and it definitely uh, showcases their talent so you know I, I kind of enjoy the tone of this there were times where it was kind of difficult to to make out the lyrical content and I had I was struggling finding the lyrical content on on the internet simply because it was an uh, unreleased track. But thank you so much for this request, for your patience for me getting to it. Hope you enjoy this. Until next time, folks, take care. <laughs>